I know, you know, not to be super negative, but you know, that's, no, but, that's, you, but you got to be realistic yeah. about what you're facing. And so that that's been like, I guess my argument for this election is like, mm-hmm. you know, Bernie plays too nice. Yeah. And we need to play dirty. And I don't mean yeah. dirty, like stoop to their level. I oh, mean, no, no. I mean, let's OK, they're, they want to complain about Bernie bros. Let's compa- uh, complain about Biden bros. Let's complain. Or just you know. Joe Biden being the super creep himself. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. But I'm saying like we should be we should go low. Now, Bernie personally will never he'll never go. Yeah. low. But I think I think his surrogates should by all means go low on yeah. those things. I mean, you honestly like play the double standard. Yeah. You got to open it up. It doesn't serve you or the people you're trying to serve to not do everything you can to win the election. Yeah. Like, Especially when you know it's going to get handed to Trump if Biden wins. Yeah, like this is a really <laughs> critical stage in like a, not just progressive politics, but just like everyday America. people's <laughs> lives. You know, yeah. like if you want to continue to have like a solid, normal life and not have to work like, you know, it's like all the progress that we made in the past hundred years is kind of evaporating. It's being undone. Yeah. Actively. And like if you want to go back, like we, the work week used to be six days a week. Mm-hmm. You know, like the the billionaires, all the, the philanthropists, you know, like yeah. this is a great library. It's Mr. Rockefeller, Mr. Carnegie. <laughs> but, uh, you know, those guys like really controlled everything and mm-hmm. everyone's lives. And we're going back to that. And instead of it, I mean, obviously Jeff Bezos is, you know, uh, basically a clone of yeah. that. Oh, yeah. Years later. Completely. Um, but you think about it like private equity is too, man. Like they're this, they're accomplishing the same things that those titans of industry did before Mm -hmm. you know and like having somebody like bernie who cares about the working class is important you know regardless of what you believe about more social politics like at its core like do you want your life to be better or do you want it to get worse because objectively like regardless of your social politics man like things are we allow things to continue to go the way they are. They're going to take away like the protections and the kind of basic human rights that like everyone else, not everyone else, but a lot of other developed countries just get, Yeah. you know? And I mean, like, do you want to be able to, or do you want to have to stick at a job that is terrible and treats you like shit because you need health insurance? Like you should be able to like go to a doctor. You shouldn't yep. have, you know, it shouldn't be $20,000 because like something happened to you and, you know, your job is going to litigate the hell out of like that workplace accident that happened, mm-hmm. you know, like we should be able to just kind of like live as freely as possible. And that's always the ironic thing to me about it because like the farther you go on the spectrum, right, you, you run into libertarians, right, who are just all about like individual freedoms and stuff. Yeah. Um, but, and they, but they forget that you have no power as an individual. Yeah, they're disillusioned with how that individual freedom exists. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, if you allowed those people to do whatever they want, everyone to be able to do whatever they want, they're going to coalesce because they have more resources than you. And they're yep. going to, you know, drop hammers on everyone and then we're all going to be screwed. You know what's libertarianism? Feudalism. Yeah. <laughs> but just minus kings and queens. <laughs> that, no, that's literally yeah. what it is. It's just like, oh, okay, so you can become a vassal. And then they'll be mm-hmm. they'll be the the leader of the castle, and yeah. you know because you don't have enough power or leverage or resources, you're mm-hmm. gonna have to just suck up to that guy. Like, yeah, you know, I think I understand the concept of wanting the personal freedom, but mm-hmm. I think they really don't think through the longer implications yeah, of what absolutely. it means. I mean, like, I'm not gonna lie to you. Like, one thing I really really want to do is like buy a good amount of acreage up in like the north woods of like Wisconsin or the UP, and like build a home and live up there because like i love that part of the country i think it's beautiful i Mm -hmm. also like i love how peaceful it is i love being like alone with my three dogs and my partner and being able to just kind of like live and be stress-free i think that's great i Mm -hmm. think like that idealism i think that's pretty that would probably be pretty similar to what like a lot of libertarians believe but like politically and policy wise like you can want that, but that can't be the basis for how you want things to be run because it's, it's just not going to happen. Yeah. That's just not how people are going to be. Yeah. Like there also just like how many people are there in the country? It's like 333 million people. Like there's not enough land. There's not enough space. You have to be able to understand and accommodate people who are different than you. Mm-hmm. And I think that's like one of the big like flaws in that thinking, because like if you don't think about those people, then like your dream isn't going to happen. If you know, like Oh, you know about this land and corner a little bit. And you know what happens when people come running and people come through and want to take it. Exactly. <laughs> oh, well, uh, I'll defend my land. Okay, but with what? Because they have bigger guns than you. Yeah, have more or there's, just, there's way more of them than you, you know. Yep. Like the Spartans lost at Thermopylae. 
as cool as it was, as much as some people love to idealize that, they mm-hmm. did lose. They still <laughs> lost. Yeah, they still lost. You know. Yeah, I think it's just important to remember that like solidarity with your fellow people yeah. is ultimately actually you know, selfish in a way because mm-hmm. it helps you have a better life. Exactly. And that, that's the thing that like always confuses me. Like, you know, if we just, if we all say that we want to do this, we'll all kind of get what we want. We don't mm-hmm. have to infight. You know? Yeah. And it goes back to that class thing that I said earlier, you know, we use the, the, the social politics to leverage one another against each other. And then when people with the money and interests can buy elections and do whatever they want to do and stuff. So. Because they divided you. Yep. What, but what we've seen is that people have the power Mm -hmm. is that when we do get together, like, you know, like some people did in Nevada where they just blew everyone else out the water and Mm -hmm. and Bernie won overwhelmingly. Like that was a bunch of people getting together. And in super Tuesday, um, that was a bunch of people who were scared, but they got together. And Mm -hmm. although they backed a horse that isn't actually going to help them and probably would lose to Trump, you know, they backed it because they felt like, I don't know. I, I don't know who to pick. Mm-hmm. All of the people who I wanted to support just dropped out. I guess I'll go with the guy that they backed. Right. Not understanding the power structure that was pushing behind this mm-hmm. to prop him up as a one last ditch effort to survive in this dying, yeah. this dying version of our democracy. Yeah. It like... It boggles the mind. You it know, does. If you spend too much time thinking about it, you'll end up in a very negative place because you're like, the answers are right here in front of us. It is not that complex. You know, like but the, but the, that's where messaging comes in. Yeah, we have to get better at messaging Absolutely. because clearly, you know, the revolution and and all that that has really resonated well with the people that's already been activated. Yeah, but we need to get regular people who don't realize all this shit's happening yeah. and who aren't fully tuned in. We need mm-hmm. to show them that, you know. Bernie's positions are actually really not that extreme at all and that they're pretty normal given like not only the global scale, but in America, that was mainstream. All of his ideas were mainstream ideas decades ago before Mm -hmm. the media was continually bought out. Really television kind of fucked everything up because once we got television, (laughs) television allowed corporations to buy up influence, to put out certain ideas, to propagate propaganda at at a rate that is coordinated and is effective yeah. and is probably using techniques designed by the CIA that I'm sure that they learned yeah. about disinformation <laughs> campaigns from overthrowing other governments. Yeah. And when you think about it, too, like there are only so many TV channels and there's somebody controlling how many TV channels there are, too. So like, it's like six you, companies that own all media. Companies. Yeah. Like and it's pretty much everything's becoming Disney here. <laughs> yeah. For real. For real. Um, but yeah, it's nuts. I mean, you think about it like there are just a couple of things. they are just like different approaches that they could take to like just to get everyday people more engaged. Like the mm-hmm. urban planning thing, like I guess nobody thinks about that, but like, do you want to be able to get home from work quicker? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and everyone would say yes. Yeah. Like, do you not want to have potholes? Uh, you know, it, it kind of goes back to that, you know, like politicians will fill potholes come election time. It's like, we can still do that and we can do that on a bigger scale and make your life better, you know? But, you know, I think there are other things that a lot of people care about or maybe not that they care about more, but just that are a bigger focus. Mm-hmm. But there are also just as many people who are fine. Yeah. Maybe not just as many. I don't know about, th- that. Yeah. about that. There are a lot of people who are like. There are enough people who are okay enough, like through Stockholm Syndrome. Yeah. Of just being like, I guess this is how yeah. it is. Yeah. They definitely yeah. like want to maintain the status quo. But there are things like if you talk to somebody, they'd be like, oh, yeah, this sucks. Like the CTA sucks. Like, yes. It's terrible. The free- There's too much traffic. How do you fix more traffic? Yeah. It takes paradigm shift with urban planning policy, with transportation policy, you know. And like, I think it's a way, it's like a nonpartisan thing too. Mm-hmm. I think that's, a, it'd be a good way to, uh, it is a nonpartisan approach thing. Approach people on the other side of the aisle and be like, Hey man, do you want to be a one issue voter? You should care about this. <laughs> yeah, for real. And I think most people will get on board on, yeah. on both sides of the aisle. I think just the, the, the key is messaging, finding a way to get both sides to see the commonality yeah. between their class interests mm-hmm. and the political class interests yeah. because they're different. <laughs> yeah. And realizing that we're all on the same team. We can argue about the minutia of certain things, but I think we all agree let's get these fuckers out of office. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. I Not mean, just Trump. I mean other bo- oh, yeah. politicians on both sides yeah. of the aisle. You know, the funny thing, too, about it is like, with the economic interest, the productivity would just skyrocket. If people are like not angry after coming into work, like, yep, 
work better. Yep. <laughs> yeah. You can ship more things if there are less cars on the road. Things get there faster. People spend more money. Well, and that's that's another part that I don't understand why people don't really see the connections is mm-hmm. that that's a feedback loop. Yeah. You know, and if you change the feedback loop where somebody feels good, they do better work from their better work, they get more productivity yeah. from the more productivity, you make more money. You know, like it's an obvious cycle. You know what it is too, like that's kind of like a building block for the whole like concept of like capitalism and bootstrapping and the concept of like, Oh, well, I want to make more money so I can have X and I can have Y and I can have Z. They come into the office in a good mindset. Like they can make more money. They'll want to get a, you know, do this and that and this. And mm-hmm. I don't know. It makes too much sense. That's why it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs>